All right, good morning, guys. In the caribou still. Today, I am on Deca Lake, which actually is two lakes connected by a little waterway that's pretty shallow. There's little Deca, which is very accessible, but generally doesn't have many kokanee. And then there's big Deca, which is about a three mile paddle or five kilometer paddle for you Canadians uh, up to where it starts to deep, deepen out, and uh, you can start catching fish. So we've got a long, long day on the water today. This is supposed to be one of the more reliable kokanee lakes in the caribou for big kokanee. Um, so I'm really hopeful that uh, I can find some fish. Uh, I've struggled a little bit up here on some of the other lakes, which are supposed to be more productive. So hoping that uh, we find some nice big Deca Lake kokanee today. All right, let's get going. Okay, so there are marker buoys in here that mark the channel. Um, I've, it seems like if they kind of meander to each side of it, so I'm just kind of sticking close to those markers and it's keeping me fairly well in the channel. I am definitely getting some weeds on my crop. I'm having to periodically stop and clear. But you can see they're spaced out down through here, so it's pretty easy to follow them. You can see it gets really narrow in here. It's only a few feet deep. So you gotta really take your time if you're in a power boat. And uh, just kind of putter through here. Just so you don't bottom out in this soft mud. It's crazy. Okay, so off to the left when you're coming up towards Big Deca, there's a big point that sticks out here, this wooded point, beyond which the lake opens up. It's a huge lake, so it's very intimidating for somebody like me in a small craft, but um, there's a little island just beyond this point where the shelf drops off. So I'm gonna go to there, drop in, and then start trolling towards a very distant point on the horizon there to see covering different depths and see if I can't find some schools of kokanee hanging out. I love the loon call. Okay, so all the other lakes I've been fishing up here, the kokanee have been hanging out anywhere from 20 to... 35, 40 foot deep. So I'm gonna do just a quick drop with my fish hawk temperature sensor. Kokanee are ectotherms, which means they rely on the environment around them to maintain their body temperature. So what I do is I just drop this sensor down through the water column. I'll probably go down about you know, 60 feet at most. And it's gonna record the temperature every five feet. And what I'm really looking for is 54 to 56 degrees. That's where kokanee are most comfortable. And this will just give me a good starting point. So at least I know I'm putting my gear down, potentially at least in the right strike zone. Okay. Then I just bring it back up. And this just takes a minute and it at least gives me some confidence that, you know, even if I'm not marking fish, I'm hopefully in the right zone. So here you go, it shows at the surface it's 65. Then at 20 feet it drops off to 58. And at 25 feet it's 52 and then 48, 30. So basically they're going to be, yeah, it gets really cold down there. Basically they're going to be you can see there's almost a thermocline right at 20 feet, between 20 and 25 feet. That's where the thermocline is. It drops from 58 to 52. So that's probably where I'm gonna stick my gear, is between 20 and 25 feet. 
And it's pretty cool paddle in. I saw just a ton of uh, eagles and loons. Saw beaver and river otter. That was pretty neat. I'm seeing some fish busting on the surface here. And you know, sometimes I've noticed when you get schools of kokanee or loose con concentrations of kokanee, in the morning they'll still come up and opportunistically take, you know, bugs near the surface. And they can be really aggressive on the surface feeding, especially before the sun hits the water. So if I see fish hitting the surface, you know, there's a chance I'm chasing trout, but there's also a chance that I'll go over there and find kokanee because they're going to come up to the surface, but they're going to drop back down to that, you know, 20, 25 feet depth range where there's more ideal temperature. There's fish. Yes. Came up really shallow. Came up to like 30, 40 feet of water. Oh, he's off too. Dang it. Well, that's a good sign though. That's a good, good sign. Came up started trolling like 45 feet of water. If I get bit, I'll usually give at least two passes back through the same area before I move on. Ooh, I'm a pink hoochie. There we go. I'm gonna turn. Oh, it's heavy. That's my first bite on the pink hoochie the entire time I've been in BC. Feels very heavy. Come just as I swung out off that shallow shelf there. Come on, be a big kokanee, not a laker. You gotta swing that little clip weight into me. I always speed up so it keeps the pressure on him. Looks pretty chromey. Oh yeah, that's kokity. Now he's going squirrely. That's a nice fish. That is a beautiful fish. That is what I came here for. Okay. Get out from behind me. Oh, just missed that stab. That was painful. Good grief, look at the size of that fish. Come on. Come on, dude. What are you doing? Got him! Yes! Oh my god, that thing is huge. Yes. Oh, that makes... Makes my day to get a big kokanee like that. Oh, that's so exciting. I only had to paddle 6.2 miles to get him, but I got him. Wow. That is a dick. Good old pink hoochie comes through for me. There you go. Look how thick that guy is. He's a beast. Awesome. That's my favorite setup there is the nickel moon jelly pink hoochie. That is a big... Beautiful kokanee. I'll take that. Alright, there we go. My first big caribou kokanee. I'm so stoked to finally get one. Uh, I've put in a lot of effort a lot of days. The weather's been pretty rough. Although it's been very enjoyable having cold temperatures, it's nice to get a nice big fat caribou kokanee. <laughs> Let's hopefully we can get some more, but this is still a really nice fish. I'm really pleased. One thing that I really appreciate about Big Deca thus far, so there's a lot of wildlife, but it is extremely quiet up here. You don't really realize how noisy the world is until you have a camera running all the time. 
and like where I film a lot, there's a lot of development around lakes. And so there's just like a constant sound of like chainsaws and leaf blowers and lawn mowers and, and vehicles. And that's distracting, but like what really amazes me is like how much air traffic there is where I live because a lot of planes come in uh, on their way to Seattle. It just creates this constant background of noise and up here there's like none of that <laughs> um i haven't even heard an airplane since i've been here today which is really interesting to think about like this is definitely one of the quietest places i've ever fished well my first pass i had that bite on the downrigger then came back around got one fish then had one more bite and then now two passes, nothing. So it might be time to move on. Explore some new water. Fish. Oh yeah. That thing is ripping line. Whew. Mark that spot. Wow, he is ripping line. Oh, that's a big kokanee. Big, big kokanee. All right. Let's keep this guy nice and mellow. Oh, there he goes. Now he's doing... Oh, he's off right there. Are you kidding me? Oh. That sucks. What a heartbreak. That thing was huge. He just went down to this loop and spit it. I don't think I did anything wrong there, just that's what happens. Oh man, that is just brutal when you've been trolling for four hours and that's your like second legitimate good hookup. Oh, sucks. Oh, there's fish. On the pink hoochie again. He's appealing like jumping back there. Stay on there, buddy. Oh, I hate when they're jumping like that. Look at him, he's going crazy. That's a big fish. Oh, did he throw it? Hope not. That's how the other one was. It like fought really hard in the beginning, filled a bunch of line, and then came right to the boat through the hook. Oh, he's still there. He's just swimming with me. It makes me nervous. Stop that jumping nonsense back there. It's so far behind the kayak, it's jumping like crazy. Okay, let's not have repeat of last time. Let's hope. Keep him on here. Oh god, oh gosh. Good grief. What a beast. Stop your jumping. Stay down. Stay down. No! Don't do that. Squirreling up towards me. Gosh, that's a big fish. Yes! Got him! Oh, yeah! Oh, yes! Yes! yes. Oh. That is awesome. That's another dig. That makes me feel so good to get this fish in the boat. It is basically about the same size as that last one. Just a beast. And that was just one hook in him. Look at that fish. Dang. That was great. Dropper's getting on the love today. Snap weights. Three ounces. I'm clipping it in at 30 and then I'm letting out another 70. So I'm probably bouncing around right in the 28 to 30 foot depth range. Basically caught that fish almost exactly where I lost the other one. They're just loose schools. I don't ever mark anything, but they're in there. Certain areas seem to hold fish more so than others. 
sometimes I think that these snap weights really do hunt a little more because they go up and down through the water column. When you turn, they drop more than, say, a downrigger. Uh, just because I've got, you know, 70 foot of line out and the weight can just swing up and down as it goes through the water column. And your downrigger weight really holds it steady. You know how many fish it takes to make a fisherman happy? Besides the limit, it's just one more. Just one more. I just need one more. I'll be happy. I just want one. Okay, two. Just two and I'll call it good. But I lost that one, so now I want three. So interesting how like this morning, I had two bites tight to the shore, like 40, 50 foot of water. Now I'm out here banging out fish in 150, 200 feet of water. That's why coconut are annoying, right? I can be everywhere. I'm gonna do an experiment. For the last 30 minutes up here, I'm gonna go to dropper on this rod. It's also gonna give my legs a break. Since it's a lot easier to pedal this kayak when I don't have the down right now. It's not a huge difference, but man, I did 20 plus miles yesterday and I'm gonna do 20 today, so. Just kind of figured, give myself a break. Oop. There we go. Yes. Yes. Stay on there. Peel in line. That's where they make a couple big hard runs and then they just start swimming with you as you reel them in. Like, okay, they're like, I'm gonna save this energy for the fight at the boat. So I can make that guy's life a nightmare. Nice fish. Oh, it's pretty. He's in there. He's in there. Got him. Another big one. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That is sweet. Ooh, I just bird's nest that really bad. Take care of that in a sec. Awesome. Gosh, these are nice fish. Nice fish. Proverbial toads. Look at that fish. Man, that is a tank. Beastie boy. There we go. Another big deck of fish. Number three in the boat. Wind's starting to pick up though, so I gotta keep an eye on it. But I'm gonna stick it out as long as I can. Seems like 1.4 is the magic speed today. Every time I, I look down and check what speed I was going when I get hit. Oop, there was a bite. See that? Just a tap. There he is, there he is, got him. He's following it. <laughs> I figured he was following it after hitting it like that. So he came up, he tapped it, and then he, I made that turn and he committed. Crazy. Not fighting like the other kokanee. He's staying down deep. Not really uh, making any long runs or anything. It's a big laker. <laughs> I'm not really a huge fan of lakers. I find them kind of boring. Precisely because of the way that fish fought. But, oh well. Alright, that was a dirty net job. Let's get this guy in the net. There we go. <laughs> He's heavy. On this kokanee rod. He's taking away from my kokanee time too. Alright. See you later buddy. Stay away from my kokanee gear and leave me alone. Oh man. Now my net smells like liquor. My hands are slimy. It's the worst. Well had I known it was a liquor that tapped my gear back there. I wouldn't have tricked him into biting my gear. Yep. Nice. 
All right, so I switched that one up to the Moon Jelly Spinner behind a Wonder Bread Dodger. Oh, it feels heavy. Oh, that is a huge kokanee. Okay. That is a giant kokanee. Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys. That is got to be one of the biggest kokanee I've caught in my life. Oh my god. Dude. Dude. Oh my god. He fought like a like a trout. He is so thick. I was pretty down on the caribou yesterday, but now I'm starting to love this place. Wow. Wow. Ooh, the spinner come through for me. Look at that fish, guys. Oh my god. That is a dink. Okay. Wonder Bread. Paulina Peak Performer Light. And his Indiana Min Minnow Blade Moon Jelly Purple Pink. Pink's been my color today, so that's why I decided to go with that. That is a Cocosaurus Rex. turn kind of acting weird long slow deep thumps but that last big kokanee did the same thing all right let's do this part a little more energetic more kokanee like put some speed on it nice thing is i got the wind to my back which kind of helps just keep pushing me along oh what do i see what do i see I see a blue back. That's another nice kokanee. Let's see if we can't get this guy. And an easier stab. Come on. Just gonna sweep him up. And then lift up. Oh, dang, he saw that coming. He's like, no, thank you. Try that again. Uh, 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 keep that head forward so they don't do the twisty thing. Come on. Come on. That's not what I wanted to have happen. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Come on. Got him. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I got a limit of tank kokanee. Oh. All thanks to one rig, essentially. That's awesome. That is so awesome. What a beautiful fish. Oh man, look, I just barely had him hooked. He's probably gonna throw it in the net. So there's this setup right here. This, this is a Peak Performer Light Moon Jelly Nickel. And then just a plain pink Micro Hoochie. Wind's starting to pick up too, so I feel pretty happy about just getting that wrapped up right now. I put on some serious miles. I think I'm at 13 miles. So yeah, by the time I get back, it'll be probably closer to, I think I'm about four or five miles from the launch. It'll be a pretty good day, almost 20 miles on one body of water. Probably burn more calories than I'll get out of eating all of these kokanee, but that's how it goes. Look at that fish. Isn't that pretty? What a nice fish. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for me here on DECA. I was on Big DECA today. I just want to say special thanks to Richie at Paulina Peak for making this trip possible. And then also everybody on the BC Kokanee Fishing Facebook group, which I'll put links to below. Super awesome group of guys. Really different vibe than, you know, when I'm in the United States, and I, I show up at lakes, everybody kind of gets a little bit disappointed. I think they're always worried I'm going to blow out their favorite water, but these guys are all super awesome, giving me lots of tips and really excited to see me have success up here, and I appreciate that. All right, guys, if you ever make it up to the Caribou, I would put Big Decca on the hit list. See you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye.